book of 1 Timothy. Uh, uh, we have been in 1 Timothy uh, for about eight months now, and we're now in chapter 5 and verse 17. Um, and for those of you that have been with us as we've gone through the book of First Timothy, uh, there's kind of been a theme that that we've seen as we've gone through the book, and the theme is pointing people to Christ. Um, as Paul gives instructions to Timothy, it covers a range of topics, uh, but within those topics, he's always bringing Timothy back to pointing people to Christ. Um, so if if you uh, just to hit some highlights. Um, you know, you look at chapter 1 and verse 12, and he says, I give thanks to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful, appointing me to the ministry. One who was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an arrogant man. But I received mercy because I acted out of ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed along with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. But I receive mercy for this reason, so that in me, the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now, so here we have at the very beginning of the book of Timothy, focusing back on Christ, um, Excuse me. Um, verse 5 of chapter 2 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all, a testimony at, a, at the proper time. Um, verse uh, chapter 3, if you look down... Um, uh, Verse 16 says, And most certainly the mystery of godliness is great. Speaking of Christ, it says, He was manifest in the flesh, vindicated in the Spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up to glory. Uh, if you go down to chapter 4, um, uh, look at verse 6. It says, If you point out these things to the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished by the words of faith and the good teaching you have followed. Uh, verse 8 says, for the, for the training of the body has a limited benefit, but godliness is beneficial in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Um, verse 10, in fact, we labor and strive for this because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of everyone, especially of those who believe. Verse 11, command and teach these things. Uh, verse 16 of chapter 4, pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Persevere in these things, for in doing this you will save both yourself and your hearers. Now we've been looking at chapter 5 uh, for a few weeks now, and uh, chapter 5 is dealing with uh, how to deal with, how to, how to confront people in the body, um, how, to, how to support those who truly have needs. Uh, in this case, uh, the representative of that would be the widow in their culture, uh, the widow who truly had nobody, had nothing and no way of supporting herself, someone who was truly in need. And so there's some instructions on how to support the widow. Um, and if you'd like to look, uh, learn some more about that, you can listen to last week's sermon. Um, but the point that God is making here is as you, in, in the beginning of chapter 5, if you confront people in the body, you're supposed to do so in a way that points them and everybody else to Christ. If you support those who need support, whether they're within the body or without of the body, you should do so in a way that points people to Christ. Right? So when it gets to chapter, uh, verse 17 here, the context of what God is dealing with is, are we successfully pointing people to Christ? So when he says, the elders who are good leaders should be considered worthy of an ample honorarium, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching, for the scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker is worthy of his wages. The point that God's making here has to do with 
how do we have practical wisdom in pointing people to Christ? Right? So, um, you know, we, the title of the sermon today is Honor and Leadership. And if you were to go outside of the church, and you were to go anywhere outside of the church, and you were to find people who were worthy of honor, almost 10 times out of 10, you could probably say 99 times out of 100, you would know they were worthy of honor in some form by the remuneration they were receiving for the honor they had earned. Right? They were, there was, there's there's a, a, an honor that comes when we say this person is worthy of some form of honor. Right? Maybe it's not because of their lifestyle. Maybe we're not honoring them because of what a great example they are and how to live. But maybe they're just an excellent whatever they're good at. Maybe it's an inventor or, or a manager or a good leader or somebody who is really gifted at something and, as, and when we honor them, we honor them through some form of financial acknowledgement. Maybe it's an artist, right? There's a musician, right? You don't honor somebody in the world with no financial acknowledgement. There's not much honor there, right? If you were to say to, say to a group of people, hey, I want to I honor you and I want to present you an award and uh, I expect you to pay to travel for the award and what you're going to get is this nice plaque and that's it, that not very many people are going to show up. They're not going to feel really honored. But if you said, hey, I got this plaque for you. We're going to cover the cost of your trip. We're going to cover your expenses while you're here. We're going to give you some form of honorarium because we're truly trying to honor you. They would feel honored and they would probably want to show up. And this is how life works outside of the church. So if the church is going to understand how culture works, if the church is going to accurately reflect the God's love to the culture, we have to recognize that we live in a world that chooses to honor in part with money. So when it comes to Scripture, and it says the elders who are good teachers should be considered worthy of an ample honorarium, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching, Right? And the ample honorarium there, in some translations, is double honor. Right, And if you were to say, wow, does that mean that we're supposed to give the, the, the preachers and the teachers double the money that they deserve? I don't think so. Okay? I don't think that's what God's getting at. Aw, shucks. There goes my big chance. Uh, but if, if you were to say to the world, God is most important, and every believer would be able to say, our Lord and Savior is most important, right? And so you were to go outside of the church and communicate with the people that you know that, that I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is most important in my life, all right? Then that person gains an interest in learning more about this Savior that you claim is most important, right? And that person uh, visits your church. And it just so happens that uh, they hear that the preachers and teachers at your church um, are you know, unable to survive well on the money that the church is given, giving them. Which, by the way, that's not the case here at First Baptist, and I'm very thankful. But this person hears that, the, that they're not, you're, you're, the church is paying them, but it's not much, and they're not able to really survive on it. What you communicate about the value of God's message is that his message is less valuable than other things in our culture. 
right? It's important to me, but as a group of us, we don't really hold his message very high. At least the messenger is it's okay. He's just a man, you know. He's got plenty of his own faults. So, you know, we don't really see the need to, to really pay him much more. Also, we really can't afford it, you know, it's just the way it works. And this person who hears about God's truth from you is going to walk away and they're going to question the value of the truth that you are communicating. Because they're going to say, then the communicator, the person that you're telling me is supposed to be sharing that truth with those who believe that truth is heavily underwater financially in our, in our current subculture. They're going to walk away and they're going to go, eh, well, that may or may not be valuable, but apparently they don't put a lot of stock into the truth that they claim is so valuable. Why? Because that's how, the reason why is that's how our culture functions. Now, this is really easy to feel like you can run away with. It's like, well, how much then, how much then should the, the, the communicators of God's word, how much should they be paid? Well, the, the scripture doesn't give an amount. It just says that it should be sufficient and demonstrative that we choose to honor this person. And I think God's intentionally vague on what it should be because every church functions in a slightly different subculture. Right? So uh, here in Big Rock, there's a, a, a standard of living that is normal in the community, right? And in our surrounding communities. And so there's a certain level of income that's needed to survive. But if you go to a different subculture, you have different expectations and different normals, what's normal that's needed to survive. So what looks like honor here in Big Rock could be woefully insufficient or way overboard in another subculture. Right? So what God is getting at here is, as you gather as my body, as you gather as my people, and you choose to honor those that communicate scripture, in your immediate context, what constitutes honor? Well, when it comes down to it, it's not that complicated to figure out. How much does it cost to live? <laughs> if, you, if somebody is, is, has enough to live on and not submerge, their, their, their family and their livelihood, then anybody who walks in would go, oh yeah, I can see you're choosing to honor that person and, their, and, and support their family. And that, so he says here, do not muzzle the ox while it's treading out grain and the worker is worthy of his wages. It's just, uh, it's just a reference um, and uh, He's, he's, he's quoting multiple scriptures. You have Leviticus um, and 19, 13, Deuteronomy 24, 14 through 15. Um, and, you know, Christ himself quoted some of the, something similar. So um, the idea is if you put in the work and the effort to do a, an excellent job of communicating scripture, then your time should be valued. That's all. Right? Anybody who's lived in the world long enough knows that time equals money. At least it should for those who are thinking smart. Right? Because if time doesn't equal money, how are you going to survive? If your time doesn't go into things that provide financial remuneration, then you're going to not survive. So if you, if you think of it from a standpoint of if somebody puts in work, which they should do, to accurately represent scripture as it's taught and preached, then their time is valuable. So don't, don't keep them from benefiting from their time. That's all. You know, it, it's, not, it's not overly complicated. And so, you know, when it comes to 
uh, who is who is worthy? Well, the scripture says those who are good leaders should be considered worthy, and especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Sometimes I preach scripture and I feel like I'm just about ready to eliminate myself, or maybe I should turn in a letter of resignation as I preach this. <laughs> the idea that those who are good leaders, I look in the mirror and I think, ha, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Um, you know, and then it's like, you know, those who uh, put in hard work at preaching and teaching is like, well, I think I work hard, but compared to some people, I don't know if I work hard enough. And, you know, you, you start this whole who, who is worthy, and uh, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't feel like I'm worthy. I just want you to know that. All right, so, you know, the church has called me, and the, the body has said, oh, Steve, we, we recognize this God's gift on you, and I respond to the call that God has placed. That doesn't mean that I feel like, oh, I must be worthy of this. Like, oh, boy, I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, it's one of those uh, Lord help moments. <laughs> um, so I want you to know that as I'm, as I'm preaching through this, I'm not patting myself on the back, figuring out that, oh, I've got this, I've got this really well. Um, as a matter of fact, when you say, well, who, is, who should be worthy of that, I would not put a sign on my shoulders saying, good example. <laughs> right? I, would, I would find somebody else and say, let's look at them and see if they're the right. Oh, they're, they're probably a good example. And maybe I could strive for that example. Um, but I think the point that God's making is when we as a body recognize those who we say, okay, God has called you. We consider you to be a good leader pointing us to Christ. And uh, we recognize that you're gifted in preaching and teaching and we, that you work hard at it. We want you to be able to work harder at it. We want you to be honored for what you are gifted and, and what you are doing. That those are the people that the church should be uh, honoring through, um, well, an honorarium, as it says here. Um, I want you to know something. If we, if we were not going through 1 Timothy and we had not been in process of preaching through this, I, I would not have picked these verses to preach at any specific point. I'd have asked somebody else to preach them because, frankly, it's just awkward. Um, so I want you to know I feel that. Uh, if you feel awkward, join the club. We can be awkward together. Uh, but I'm really thankful that God has placed us here at First Baptist. And I have felt since the very first time that, we, that, that uh, the church paid me for uh, preaching and teaching that it, it has been uh, very honorable what you've been able to commit to, um, and for, uh, especially considering that I'm part-time here at the church. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, choosing to honor the scripture. Uh, I want to end with this because I don't want anyone here to think that the purpose in preaching this was for me to get more money. <laughs> uh, it just so happens this is the next verses in First Timothy. Okay? Um, so I want you to know that I'm very thankful and I do not expect any more from you. Um, uh, and I feel like, from a standpoint of the culture that we are in, uh, that as a church, we are doing as best as we know how of pointing people to Christ through honoring the preaching and teaching of God's Word. Um, so thank you for that. And um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, next week, we're going to continue in 1 Timothy. We're going to be looking at, uh, starting in verse 19, um, and going through the end of chapter 6. It's actually quite a few different things that um, are mentioned there, but they all are about pointing, uh, pointing back to Christ. Um, so we're going to be looking at that. Uh, and then we get to some really hard stuff in chapter 6. Um, so if you want to come back in a couple weeks, uh, 
uh, or, or catch up on it. Uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, what God says about slaves honoring masters. Um, so that'll be coming in a couple weeks. Um, let's close this morning with a word of prayer, and then Mark will come and lead us with a closing hymn. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the power of your truth. Lord, we're thankful for the joy it is to worship and serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, I thank you that I get to be part of a body that is working to honor you and honor your truth. And Lord, please give us the humility and the wisdom that we need to continue doing this, as we continue honoring you as we move forward. Um, and... Uh, Lord, if anyone is uh, struggling with that this morning and struggling with this specific topic of honoring those who preach and teach the word, Lord, I pray that you would um, give them some clarity in their own spirit um, and that you would use us as a body not only to be an example but also to communicate love um, in, the middle of the, in the middle of those struggles. Um, and uh, Lord, we just ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.